which I stumbled on as a resident working in the Massachusetts State Hospital System. My experience working with the most complicated psychiatric patients set me on a path of investigation into the ways in which treating the body can transform the mind. It's been an enthralling journey, and though it continues, it's time to deliver that message to the public. What neuroscientists have discovered in the past five years alone paints a riveting picture of the biological relationship between the body, the brain, and the mind. To keep our brains at peak performance, our bodies need to work hard. In Spark, I'll demonstrate how and why physical activity is crucial to the way we think and feel. I'll explain the science of how exercise cues the building blocks of learning in the brain, how it affects mood, anxiety, and attention, how it guards against stress, and reverses some of the effects of aging in the brain, and how in women it can help stave off the sometimes tumultuous effects of hormonal changes. I'm not talking about the fuzzy notion of runner's high. I'm not talking about a notion at all. These are tangible changes measured in lab rats and identified in people. It was already known that exercise increases levels of serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine, important neurotransmitters that traffic in thoughts and emotions. You've probably heard of serotonin, and maybe you know that a lack of it is associated with depression. But even many psychiatrists I meet don't know the rest. They don't know that toxic levels of stress erode the connections between the billions of nerve cells in the brain, or that chronic depression shrinks certain areas of the brain. And they don't know that, conversely, Exercise unleashes a cascade of neurochemicals and growth factors that can reverse this process, physically bolstering the brain's infrastructure. In fact, the brain responds like muscles do, growing with use, withering with inactivity. The neurons in the brain connect to one another through leaves on tree-like branches, and exercise causes those branches to grow and bloom with new buds thus enhancing brain function at a fundamental level. Neuroscientists have just begun studying exercise's impact within brain cells, at the genes themselves. Even there, in the roots of our biology, they found signs of the body's influence on the mind. It turns out that moving our muscles produces proteins that travel through the bloodstream and into the brain, where they play pivotal roles in the mechanisms of our highest thought processes. They bear names such as insulin-like growth factor, IGF-1, and vascular endothelial growth factor, VEGF, and they provide an unprecedented view of the mind-body connection. It's only in the past few years that neuroscientists have begun to describe these factors and how they work, and each new discovery adds awe-inspiring depth to the picture. There's still much we don't understand about what happens in the micro-environment of the brain, but I think what we do know can change people's lives, and maybe society itself. Why should you care about how your brain works? For one thing, it's running the show. Right now, the front of your brain is firing signals about what you're listening to, and how much of it you soak up has a lot to do with whether there is a proper balance of neurochemicals and growth factors to bind neurons together. Exercise has a documented dramatic effect on these essential ingredients. It sets the stage, and when you sit down to learn something new, that stimulation strengthens the relevant connections. With practice, the circuit develops definition, as if you're wearing down a path through a forest. The importance of making these connections carries over to all of the issues I deal with in this book. In order to cope with anxiousness, for instance, you need to let certain well-worn paths grow over while you blaze alternate trails. By understanding such interactions between your body and your brain, you can manage the process, handle problems, and get your mind humming along smoothly. If you had half an hour of exercise this morning, You're in the right frame of mind to sit still and focus on this paragraph, and your brain is far more equipped to remember it. Everything I have written over the past 15 years has been aimed at educating people about their brains.